Hey everybody, it's Whipray. Uh, I guess I'm here to make a second video for the dedicated server setup stuff. Um, the last one was really almo only applicable to the pre-alpha stage of Imperial Galactic Survival. This one is for the actual alpha. Um, they've done a few changes to the configuration file from the pre previous version. It's uh, a bit more condensed now and it has a couple new options and features. Not all of them are, are enabled yet. Um, like, but uh, I guess that being said, uh, let's just kind of dig into it. Um, first things first, you need to navigate over to where you have uh, Empyrean installed, usually in the Steam folder. So for me, I have mine installed on my that hard drive there, Steam, and then Steam Apps, Common, and then Empyrean Galactic Survival. So once you're in this folder here, can I move it out of the way for my own little portrait being in the way? Um, once you're in there, um, it's going to be a lot like last time. You're going to have to edit the uh, dedicated Empyrean Dedicated Command Script file. Um, because that's what launches uh, the configuration, the uh, actual server clients, and a couple other configuration things. You're going to have to edit that, and then you're going to also have to edit this YAML file. That's the actual configuration file for the server. Um, when you double click on those, um, I highly recommend either using opening it with Notepad, or I personally use Notepad++, and so we're just going to kind of swing over my Notepad++ for my other monitor. And so in here, if we can zoom it in just a little bit so it's not so tiny, Oh no, where is it? Here we go, zoom. And let's zoom in just a little bit. And I, I'd use the hotkey, but the hotkey I'm using for that is uh, the same one I used to start recording, and so that's not necessarily the best thing either. So, <laughs> that being said. Um, okay, so, this is the default um, thing. I made a copy of it so I have a default blank one to pull off of. Um, in here, if it's got the little, we'll, we'll run through it line by line, but if it's got the little uh, pound sign here, that means a comment, it's a comment, and that the uh, server will not actually read that line. Um, reasons I prefer using Notepad++, it color codes things. Um, so in my case, if it's green, it's not being read by the server for when, it guns at, when it's actually reading this program. Um, it does say, to use your own dedicated uh, YAML, um, you, whatever you would like to call it, you need to add this argument right here, to the corresponding batch file. Batch file is going to be that Windows command script one. So what I have over here is the original, as soon as I can find it. Yeah, right here. So this is the original batch file before you do any edits to it. As you notice, it kind of just, it's at echo off, if not exist logs. It, shorthand of it is, turn off the echoing off to the command prompt, because when you run this, it's going to create a little cram command prompt window with some text in it. Um, if a logs file does not exist, create the logs file. Um, for function, I think that's what the slash f is, um, it just says get the local time and set that local time to the server. And then it's also going to set UDT time as well. And this way the server can keep track of how long it's been running and for certain configuration portions in the other dedicated file, um, such as like when the server like decides to delete stuff or you know puts on PVP protection and stuff like that, it has some sort of reference to look back at the CA and see, okay, this hasn't been operating for this long. I need to do this. Um, essentially, it lets it set that. Um, then we actually get to the um, meat and bones of this, so to speak, and it's saying start Imperium dedicated.exe, and then force the renderer to be D3D9, and then create the log file here. Now, in the previous, in um, the other file here, it says you need to add dedicated my dedicated config YML to this file. And what that looks like is that. You just kind of stick on, you put a space between the log thing and you just kind of shove this guy right here into the end. Um, and that tells you, uh, it's telling the game where the configuration file is. Now I've had people reply on the previous video that whenever they tried to launch a dedicated server, it would come up for half a second and then it would crash down. And what that is from is that it's trying to use a dedicated server, or it's trying to use the configuration file and it can't find a valid file or something's wrong with the configuration file and so it errors out. You can actually see the error in the logs. Um, I experienced it myself with uh, the, this current version because it's a bit more finicky in terms of uh, formatting. And I'll go over that when we actually start going into the actual um, dedicated uh, configuration file thing over here. Um, anywho, so yeah, once you've tossed that in, um, it makes things very happy in that it has a configuration file to use. Um, next, it does echo, which means it's going to be spitting stuff off to the screen. Important notice, don't use this batch file if you're connecting via remote desktop connection or if you're doing Telnet. Um, this video does not cover Telnet because I don't do that myself and I don't know how to do that or explain that. Uh, I'm sure there are other guides online or on YouTube. I would highly recommend those. 
Um, but it just uh, puts out onto a command prompt screen. Don't do this if you're doing telnets. Uh, it could cause bad performance things, etc. And then it says pause and wait for you to input a command before I close the window for you. Um, so ultimately, with this section, the Imperium dedicated thing, you only have to add in the name of the uh, configuration file, the YAML file. That's the only thing you have to add in here. I've highlighted it. If you use a different name other than dedicated, make sure that name is correct. Um, I've had a few other people before. They've had everything right except they forgot to change it f from dedicated to um, whatever their actual dedicated ser their configuration file was called, and that was causing an error there. All right. So once you have once you've put in the batch script where your dedicated uh, your where your configuration file is for your dedicated server, we go back over to the dedicated server configuration page. Now over here, server config, um, what port number? Typically leave that default unless you have a good reason to change it. Um, the server name is what the server will be appear like on the server list. Um, important thing to note, if it's not appearing on a list, it's a firewall issue in either Windows or your router. I would prefer not to try and help with that before. I've gotten some success with that. I've gotten also some failure with that trying to help other people. Firewalls and routers and all that stuff vary so greatly, it's very difficult to like really for me to in include in a single video how to do it because mine's going to be completely different from yours, which will be completely different from someone else's. Um, but suffice to say, if it's not appearing in the uh, server list, but you can connect into it if you do a direct connection through IP, it's running. Um, it's just it's not broadcasting to the greater internet. It's still there, and uh, you can still connect into it, but it's an issue with the firewalls blocking it from talking out or listening. I'm not really sure 100% myself. Anywho, uh, but if you could do like port forwarding, port triggering, and all that stuff, uh, that shouldn't be an issue from what I found. Um, anywho, from there, we go to server password. Um, and also, note this, right now, these are by default commented out. Um, if you delete these comments, you need to make sure, this is very important because this actually screwed me up a bunch of times and how I discovered how the uh, client closes immediately upon opening it. Um, it's uh, When you're trying to run it, it just closes out immediately. If you don't have, I think it's one, two, three, four, you have to have exactly four spaces before the SRV thing. If you don't, it will cause an error. So we'll go over to my dedicated server file. And as you can see, between the two, I had to get rid of both the space and the pound sign in order to make this actually work. Otherwise, it'll just cancel out and your dedicated server client will immediately shut, on, shut down as soon as you start it because it's an invalid configuration file. It has to have that formatting of four spaces, four, before you do the uh, server stuff. So server port is the port, name is the server, there's what will appear on the thing. If you want to have a password, this is where you set it, oh my goodness, this is my server password, shh. I'm going to be changing it. If you can guess it, you can log in, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, server max players is how many maximum number of players are on, allowed on the server at a given time. Uh, I usually do six. Uh, I'm also running my dedicated server on this client I'm playing it on. I'm a bad person. Um, it does cause some performance hits for me sometimes, especially if I'm trying to load a bunch of things in. My OBS stutters. Unless you got a beefy machine, don't really set this too high, especially if you're playing on the same machine that you're doing the dedicated server on. Only reason I doing it is I'm doing it is because the peer-to-peer uh, -peer version of multiplayer doesn't really work really well. So in order to be able to play it all with my friends without ten tons of bugs, I have to do it like this. Um, server reserve playfields uh, is the number of idle like playfields it keeps on the side. So when a player requests to go to another planet or outside the planet into space to the moon or whatever, it has an available playfield it can just load in for that player and not have to wait a long time for it to actually load. Um, think of it as like having a uh, car engine idling. And uh, when you want to go, you can just go. But if you don't have a car engine, you have to start it, let it warm up, and do all the other stuff. So um, it mentions in the comment here, idle playlist of ser uh, held in reserve. Uh, for public servers, they recommend at least two. Default is one. I personally run two myself. This way, if me and Twain decide doing random things at the same time, we can go back and forth without any type of issues. Um, but default is one. They recommend at least two. I've been getting by on two with just fine with just me, Tornath, and a couple other people. Um, over here is the server description in the browser. Um, I've got this comment, and this is this still needs to be commented because this isn't actually the server description. Because you notice, SRV underscore is the note of where things need to be what be uncommented. But yeah, it just says max 127 characters, and they even have it delineated out here how long it can actually be before you run out of space. I think that's 127. Um, and then you have server description. Again, make sure you have four spaces between the left side and where it actually starts with the SRV. <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, here, name of my name of my server with the description thingy in it. Um, please check out the channel. Yay, stuff like that. 
Um, and then it goes down to next comment. All play fields will automatically be stopped every n real time hours. Players will get some warning messages before it happens. And this is where that lo that uh, function in the earlier thing that sets the time for the server. That's where that's very important because it needs to see how often it needs to stop or whatever if you've got this enabled. I personally don't have this enabled because I'm not running all mine all the time. Um, here's for Telnet settings. If you're not running it to load it locally and you're renting a server or something like that, this is where how you would log into it remotely through Telnet um, to be able to configure the server. Um, and I would assume you would just, you know, again, take out the space and the comments and then suddenly enabled and all the other stuff, but you have to make sure you um, have it true, have the ports, password, all that stuff. I don't use that, I'm not very familiar with that, and unfortunately I won't really be able to help out much with that. <clears throat> um, EAC Active, uh, that is anti-cheating stuff, but from what I've been reading from the patch notes, that's not yet enabled, and they recommend not to enable it until it's actually um, implemented, because it could cause some issues with your game. Uh, over here is the save directory you would like to make it, like the server put its save files in, and um, the, it, if you don't specify it here, it just uses the default one, which is saves, which is where it's already commented out. I don't have a problem with it being in the default location, so I leave it in the default location. Um, that's before, and then we go over to game config. And if you notice, before in the previous uh, versions, all of this stuff was kind of rolled into one giant block. Now what they've done is they actually have it, the server config and game config. There's two separate sections, which is where it's been, where it's changed and why you have to use this new server configuration. Um, here is where the actual name of the save file will be, as it says right here. So game name is that, and remember, it's got to have one, two, three, four spaces between it and the wall wall being, you know, the leftmost justification, or otherwise it will break the configuration file and when you try to launch the game it will on you. Uh, but yeah, game name is what the save name will be in your saves folder. Mode is survival or creative. You don't have to actually do like numbers anymore, you can actually do text. Uh, seed is the random generation key for the world or galaxy you're on. Um, if you do the same seeds, you can do the same worlds as other people if you want to do races or anything like that. Um, I think Tornath kind of just picked a random number and we went with it, and, uh, you know, it works. <laughs> um, this is like uh, the decay, wipe time, stuff like that. Decay time is how long it'll be um, if a, a building doesn't have a core and it's player built, how many in-game days uh, it will, yeah, oh wait, no, I take that back. Yeah, real time, so um, how many um, in-game days it will take before... Um, It'll just disappear. Um, it says all in hours, but uh, one hour real time is approximately one day in game time. So when I say yes, it'll be two days, it's technically 48 in game hours because it's two real hour times, but two days effectively is what the default is, as I recall. I leave it at that because cleaning up's not a bad thing. Um, wipe time is uh, any player built structures that have not been occupied in a certain number of uh, real time hours will get demolished. Um, if you're running a big public server or something like that, and you set that really low, you may get a lot of pissed off people. Um, I personally disable it, but then again, I'm only running my server for like maybe two to three people tops. So it's not a big issue for me. Um, protect time is uh, during time during which structures are offline protected. So if you log off, people can't blow your shit up with that new uh, uh, building thing that they put in. And that's the amount of time of uh, real hours. So that's like 48 in-game days, so two days, um, where they can't mess with your stuff. Uh, max structures is number of structures per play field that you can have. Um, limits equal to 100 to reduce on performance issues. I let mine at 64, but I don't have a lot of players playing on mine. If your server hardware isn't top notch or super duper great, you may want to make sure that's lower or higher depending on how good your hardware is. And then anti grief distance, this is how many meters around a base that other players cannot, other players of different factions or other players in general, depending on how you have your factions and your building set, it's how far away they can't build things. Um, in my next series of videos I'm doing with Tornath, um, where we restart after a coup in the alpha, um, we actually ran some issues with that because I uh, was not the same faction as him, so I couldn't really modify any of the terrain or help with his building or even build my own stuff within 30 meters of the base. Um, but that's just the general dedicated server thing. Uh, the other thing that I've included, and I have someone um, make a comment about that, is admin configuration. Now, as far as I know, um, there aren't really any cheating clients or console commands. I could be mistaken. Feel free to let me know. Um, but this lets you put um, set players to be admins and stuff like that of the servers. Uh, permission level three is game master. Cause where'd it go? Yeah. 
So the ID is your Steam user ID, and it gives you a little link there to figure out whose Steam ID, or what people's Steam IDs are, so you can cross-reference that and make sure you have the right uh, Steam ID assigned to the person. Permissions themselves are three for the Game Master, six for mod Moderator, and nine for Admin. And until time, if you're trying to ban somebody, you know, they're banned. Um, I don't know if this is actually implemented. I know they put it into the game for reference, but I don't actually know if this is implemented yet. So, uh, until I have someone let me know, um, I will put an annotation here if someone does let me know. But as far as I know, this actually isn't implemented, and this is just kind of a hold-in for what they plan on doing later. So, um, and this is mine right now, it's actually empty, so it may be active, it may not be, I don't know, I haven't been using it, I haven't needed to. So, um, yeah, that's most of the how to set the thing up. So, theoretically, uh, that does mean, let's go back over into this guy, actually no, I have a shortcut. So, when everything all is this is working, you can just run this right here, so which I have a shortcut to on my desktop. It will give that little, um, oops, it'll give that little uh, message right here, saying, hey, don't do this if you're doing Telnet, press any key, continue, you hit any key. And then you notice right here, I got this little Unity engine thing, and this is the dedicated server running. If this is running, that means the server is running. If you can't see it on the server list, it's a firewall issue, it is running. Try connecting to your server um, using the uh, local area network IP address as opposed to like you know your actual real world internet address, and it should let you in. I, I had to help a user before. People couldn't see it from outside of his network, but inside of his network he could see, he could connect into it. Um, and again, it's a firewall issue if you can't get into there. Firewall stuff's messy, and I'm not terribly strong on that point, so you'll have to unfortunately check other resources for that. But this should cover you if you can, if you've already got it kind of, if you've already done port forwarding. There are tutorials on there before. I'm not necessarily just kind of tossing you guys off to the wolves. It's just, it, it, there's so much hardware out there, it is very difficult for me to say definitively, you do this, this, and this, and it works. Because it doesn't always work like that, because the hardware configuration thing is so different for different things. So it's, I cannot reliably give you guys good information on that, so I'm not going to give you half-assed information. So um, if you have issues with that, I highly recommend looking up things like port forwarding, port triggering, and other router-related firewall things to get that set up so your server can talk to the rest of the internet. Um, but uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope this is really helpful for everyone. And if you have any questions, please